it is Friday the 10th of July I don't even know what day it is um, been travelling for 375 years I can't remember being so tired and smelly ever in my life um, met everybody who's doing the trick, all six of us and everybody's really really nice but I'm definitely a weirdo and everybody's going to hate me by Saturday afternoon but it's okay don't choke on your toothpaste Fran um, first night's in a lodge so we've got a bed and we've got a shower the food is amazing they feed you like every 15 minutes um, and we're off tomorrow to where are we going in the Grongrongrongo crater yeah. hang on, yes so that's where we're headed tomorrow um, absolutely knackered, we just had a really nice meal and we are going to sleep where are we? The old Matty crater. We nearly had an old Matty heart attack getting up here. <laughs> oh my god, I'm funny. <laughs> Even when I'm dying. <laughs> Wait. So that'll be Saturday the whatever. I'm in my tent, on my own, shitting myself. Um, we walked about 255,000 miles. Well, actually, it was a thousand meters down to a crater and a thousand meters back up again. And I actually didn't think I was going to make it. A couple of episodes of near tears, but we grinned and beard it. I'm absolutely knackered. I probably won't be able to move tomorrow. Apart from that, it's been spectacular views. Um, God knows what else. I can't think of anything else to say because everybody in the other tents is thinking I'm talking to myself, which I am. So I shall sign off for tonight and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> yesterday coming up and over the escarpment overlooking I'll show you after a big mountain um, that erupted seven years ago we're now in the acacia forest kind of at the edge of the escarpment the wind was <laughs> uber highly last night this is my office this morning take lots in the morning as to who's going to walk to the rear to keep me company. Um, yesterday was okay because it was just undulating, it was fine, it was, really, it was a really nice walk. The last mile was hard because it was on like volcanic sand, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, ash. It was going quite heavy on your feet which I'm not used to. I have my first blister, it's so exciting. Um, once we get over the escarpment today and on the edge, it's all downhill, which I'm kind of glad about. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about uphill. There's a little blue bugs that fly about here and they're really, really pretty. And as soon as you line up a shot to take a picture of one, 
they bugger off. So I chased them for about 15 minutes yesterday and I'm not talking to them today, even though they're everywhere. Um, anyway, another 10 miles today, a bit of a half day actually, um, up of the escarpment overlooking Lake Natron, which you can't wait to go because there's like a Brazilian flamingos there. Um, that's about it for today. Starting to miss people though a lot. Um, don't know when of that because I get emotional. Anywho, I'll try to remember to see you tonight. Day one day. <laughs> about my Look, partner. If I'm going to have these pictures of you, they've got to be pretty good. <laughs> <coughs> That'll be this evening's supper view. Mm. I'm in the tent shut. That's the view you get. <laughs> um, it's Monday night. Um, just had an epically good tea. Chips, for God's sake. Um, quite a good day today in some cases and not so good in others. We um, climbed to the top of the escarpment, which was pretty much vertical, um, but did it up to the top. Um, went on to visit a, a bomber, which is a Maasai village, and I just really, really struggled. I find it really, really very emotional. Um, it's hard to describe because they're, they're very happy people, really happy and content with what they have, but it's so hard to see. Oh, wait a minute, I have a beast. I have a beast in my bedroom. I think it's a fly though. I'm not going to stress too much about it. Um, yeah, the, the kids were all really pleased to see us and they get their little bracelets out and want you to sort of buy stuff from them and things like that but they had babies with them and I, I, I couldn't the flies they were talking to you and the flies were in their mouth and their nose and the babies were faces were covered it was just I'd just never seen anything like that before and it was really really emotional and quite distressed for a while. Anyway the um, rest of the day went fine, trek was good. Um, tomorrow we head down onto the valley floor at Lake Natron um, and tomorrow we get showers and beer so that should be quite cool a shower would be nice because I'm actual minging like proper minging um, I'm very tired I've got a very early start I've got to be up and away for half past six in the morning so I am going to bed at eight o'clock at night speak to you tomorrow I think I'm um, supposed to be impressed with myself for doing that. We came 800 metres down the escarpment. I can't even describe that, it was just fucking horrific. And then the walk across the valley floor. <laughs> um, I was going to delete the earlier video but I figured it's about as honest as it gets um, this morning was really really beyond hard for me um, but when we got to camp we uh, have showers for the first time <laughs> not that you would know I came back and I had a shower, clean clothes, and then we went for a wee hike to the waterfalls, which was amazing. Um, bit of a water baby, so it was, it was really, really good. And it was just kind of turned the afternoon 
fun to do around for me. Um, I think I've kind of realised that my self-confidence has just been grim today. The team are really good and they kind of keep you going and they talk you around and they walk with you and I think we were about an hour after everybody else arriving back at camp. But, uh, I couldn't do another day like that. Um, I can still have a good greet, but I'm not going to just bash on. Tomorrow we're going down to Lake Natron um, see the flamingos. So that should be really, really good. It's just a half day, and then I think we'll go back to the waterfalls in the afternoon. So I'll take this little GoPro with me and uh, get some fun stuff instead of me whinging because I feel like that's all I've done. I feel like I'm kind of annoying people, maybe, <laughs> just for a change. Um, but I miss everybody. Um, today was hard. I'm off to bed now in my little tent. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Ciao. Good morning from just above Lake Natron. The view. an epic day. Today we bid a fond farewell to these boots. Hallelujah. Wednesday, I can't remember the date, I can't remember the day. Um, just going to recap, we came down the escarpment. Come down. I mean, it, it's like straight down. We kind of zigzagged, but the, the tracks were just non-existent. <laughs> How the fuck we go down? I really don't. But it was good. to be in the water for an hour. really enjoyed that. And then this morning we walked across the valley floor again towards, or to Lake Natron. I have walked over to Lake Natron since I was seven years old and I saw David Attenborough's life in the And then as we were kind of leaving Lake Natron itself, there was a family of four giraffes just it was just, yeah, we have walked halfway round the northern rift escarpment across the valley floor to Lake Natron and back. So the side of that volcano and right to the escarpment and across that valley floor there that just goes on and 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 on all the way.
we're in a lodge, which means we have a flushing toilet and a shower. And it would appear I am not sleeping alone this evening. Can you see this? My friend the gecko. Good day today. Been quite relaxed. Um, been good to get in touch with everybody at home, back in the land of civilization. We have mosquito nets. Oh, that's been a good week in some very tense surroundings. I will miss the noise of the hyenas tonight. Can't hear any mosquitoes, so we're good to go there. I'll give it a scoosh tonight anyway. Um, off on safari tomorrow. Without our feet, we're going in a jeep, um, which I have to say I'm looking forward to. And then onward to Moshi. We were going to be in the luxury of a hotel, for goodness sake. Anyway, I'm off to bed because I'm kind of shattered and we've got to be away for half past six in the morning. Night! the beast. Challenge complete. Just. So I've been away for 10 days. Seven and a bit of those were trekking. I actually don't know, I haven't had confirmation of how far we travelled yet, but it was probably about 17,000 miles. <laughs> well, that's how it felt. Uh, don't think there's any way in the world you could prepare for the heat unless you trained in a sauna, a dry sauna. Um, I anticipated the trek to be challenging, or it wouldn't really be worthwhile doing if it was easy. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't carry on talk, I didn't anticipate it being as tough at times as it was, not just physically. Physically, it was demanding, but no more than I was able, apart from one small day. But emotionally, it was hard. It was harder for me emotionally anyway, because I'm, I'm not used to being away, not far away from home with nobody I know. So that was harder than I anticipated as well. Um, physically it was all over the place because you were climbing quite steep escarpments and then even steeper escarpments and then going back down them <laughs> it was fun <laughs> not or as we say in Tanzania no <laughs> although the whole trek was incredible really when you look back on it um, maybe not quite at the time there was a couple of times where you kind of think to yourself oh my god I, I can't believe I did that but when we climbed we'd been along the crater top I think we were on day three and then we were going a bit further to go higher into the acacia forest but it was vertical <laughs> vertical I felt like is it Chris Bonington the mountaineer is that his name anyway Actually, I felt like him had walked on the moon because it was that high up. 
but it was straight up fair to call it and I was like I remember standing at the bottom thinking there is no way in hell I'm getting up there they'll have to I was looking for the cable car <laughs> but when I got to the top of that I felt like I'd done something huge in my life anyway to get up that whatever that was that upright thing <laughs> that was um I felt like that was an achievement and sleeping in a tent on my own that was a major achievement for me as well because I've never slept in a tent before so yeah a couple of achievements like that. when I was seven I asked my dad I'd been watching David I watched David Attenborough my entire life um, and I was watching I think at the time it was life on earth so I was only about seven and I remember asking my dad if he would take me to Lake Natural because I wanted to see the flamingos and he wouldn't take me. <laughs> I don't understand why. <coughs> so that on day six, I think, I kind of lost track. On day six, I think we walked, it was about two and a half hours to Lake Natural in itself. And I remember when I was kind of coming up to it, thinking, oh my God, I'm at Lake Natural in 42 years in the making. And it was quite a, For me it was a wee quiet 10 minutes because I just kind of stood there looking at the water and thinking about, you know, my dad's been, my dad's been past 22 years, so it was a big, huge thing for me. Um, I remember just standing looking at it thinking, oh my God, <laughs> Dad, I'm here! <laughs> <laughs> All that way down the road. Yeah, it was a, quite a, a personal, feeling as well as a an achievement of walking to get there in the in the first place, yeah. If somebody was to come to me and say, I was thinking about doing the Rift Valley trek, I'd be like, Bash on I'll wave <laughs> Um I would tell them to do it anytime, anytime. I'm actually even debating doing another trek of another variety in a couple of years. But yeah, definitely, definitely. If you're going to challenge yourself, challenge yourself with something that's epic because Tanzania and the Rift Valley is epic. But to take yourself completely out of your comfort zone and to be thousands of miles away with people you don't know, it does change you. It changes you with the people you meet and the people you see and the way people live, and and you know, you know re reference to the Maasai, um, but that way with the Mas the Maasai, the most important thing to them is that they've got enough cows to send their children to school because it costs a cow a year to send a kiddie to school over there. So that's about four hundred pound a year for the child to be educated, and they want their children educated. But other than that, they don't <laughs> they don't have anything, and they don't want anything. And they're genuinely happy people, so yeah, it does change you. It makes you stop and take a step back and not think I need to have designer label jeans and a two thousand pound table in my living room or whatever. Um, it made me look at myself a little bit differently because I found some parts of the trek quite emotionally hard for myself, and it made me kind of step back and when you're in your tent on your own thinking about things you've seen and where you've been and it gives you a feeling of how big the world is and how small you are in it but at the same time how important the people that are in your life are and I think I kind of come away a lot with that how important my family are and, and my close friends I know who's important now and I don't need justification from other people to be who I am. I think I'm just quite, I'm just me. I think I would kind of recommend Discover Adventure as a, a company to use if you were looking to do a challenge yourself. They are very supportive the whole way through and when you arrive at your, we were met by our team leader Mark who was really, really friendly, very outgoing, um, obviously had loads of experience of doing treks and kind of how to get people to collectively talk in a group and 
Um, when we arrived in Tanzania, he knew exactly what he was doing. There was never a feeling that he wasn't sure, because I think if he hadn't been sure, it would have been like, oh my God, what are we doing here? He was very calm. Um, they use a company in Tanzania called Scenic Safaris. And these guys, <laughs> they're amazing. They took, so there's maybe a team of six or seven from Scenic Safaris that work with Discover Adventure and your group. Um, they cook the most incredible meals in a tent the size of a small kitchen in the middle of nothing and come up with things like roast leg of lamb. Hello, <laughs> I can't do that at home. <laughs> um, we had a, a Maasai chappy, very tall Maasai chappy, um, El Elias, who was just a fountain of knowledge about everything about the area, the people, the animals, the, the ground, the volcano, the, the culture. I don't think there was anything that I asked that he wasn't able to answer or anybody else that he, he couldn't respond in a way that filled you with information and, and he was really supportive and quite funny <laughs> and kept calling me so Ubuntu means I can because we are which keeps you going and keeps you going and keeps you going because they lie and they say it's not far and it's actually 400 miles but that's okay, because to them, Kenya is very, very far. <laughs> Challenge so came by to raise funds for Help for Heroes. So when I was away, when I was doing the trek, there were times when I was, <laughs> I was struggling, I'm not gonna lie, I struggled, it was hard. And I kept thinking in my head, I'm not in a war zone. I'm not at risk personally, mm -hmm. something that was safe. Um, and you do think about, or I did, um, that there were women and men younger than me who were in conflict areas and didn't have, I don't know how to describe it, how what I was kind of thinking. I was like, stop moaning Helen, keep walking. There are people that are doing this as their job to keep you and other people safe and they're losing lives and losing limbs. So the whole help for heroes thing was in my head and I kept thinking to myself, £5,000, £5,000, the people helped you to get here and you're doing this for a really good charity and a charity that means something to me. Um, so yeah, when I was <laughs> having a wee greet in my tent at night, I was like, oh my God. There's people that are away from home for months and months and months and months on end and some people never come home and if they do come home sometimes they're not the same person so I think my little episodes of I can't do it were nothing, nothing compared to what our armed forces carry out for us so it was yeah it was quite I just want to take a couple of minutes to say thank you probably again to everybody that's helped me, supported me, burlesque dance, chucked money in, ate cakes, <laughs> swam, cycled. God, what have we all done? Danced, bought tickets, raffle tickets, wrapped raffle prizes, bought bottles of water, because I thought it might have been wine, and got, I don't know what else we've done. We've walked on fire, I've walked on bits of glass, Oof, oof, I've been hypnotised to get over my fear of spiders, which was really handy, I might add. Um, yeah, just all the support, everything everybody's done to get me to the trek, through the trek and after the trek. 